you are done making ketogenic chicken fried rice. Hey everybody, so today I'm gonna to be making another ketogenic recipe for you. You can use chicken or you can choose to leave the chicken out. All the ingredients are completely optional depending on your preference. You can also take out, add more. These are all guidelines, more than how much is definite. It's a very flexible recipe. So you can definitely manipulate it to how you like it. I will be using chicken and I'll be using all the regular stuff that you put in your average fried rice, except there will be no carrots and there will be no peas because carrots and peas are higher in carbohydrates. There's two ways to do it. You can get a head of cauliflower and basically steam it, cook it, however you normally make it. And then you take the head of the cauliflower and actually grind it with a cheese grater or separate all the florets, put them in a food processor and grind them until it's smaller chunks but not like a mashed. I don't do that way just because it is so time consuming. I will actually buy the bird's eye rice cauliflower it comes in small chunks already and it's just so much easier so this is what i use and it is three quarter cup per serving and it's only one gram of carbohydrates so the it's definitely keto so we're gonna start by heating up our frying pan. I like to use the thicker frying pan just because I do add quite a few things to it. So you wanna start with turning your stove on to around medium, medium high. While the stove is heating up the pot, you want to get your chicken ready. Now, if you are using fresh chicken breast or frozen chicken breast, you want to pre-cook it in advance. Just, you know, cook it any way you like it, if you like it on the grilled side, if you like, you know, cook it however you like it in the oven, on the stove, in your instant pot, your crock pot, get the grilled strips. I will use the canned chunk chicken breast. It has zero carbs, it's low calories, and it's got lots of potassium and sodium in it, so it's actually perfect for the ketogenic diet. They're cheap and it's just ready to go, which I love. So we're going to be using that chicken today and I've already opened it up and I put it into a bowl and I just kind of shredded it up with a fork a little bit just to make it more fine for adding to the cauliflower rice. So the stove is preheating the pan right now and we're just going to get the rice ready to go. We're just going to open the bag. The bag is hot when you take it out. So be careful. This is what it looks like. It is literally just steamed chunks of cauliflower. Occasionally, I do find that there is a piece of broccoli in it. You can leave it, you can take it out. It's That one's up to you. So when your pan is preheated, you just wanna melt about a tablespoon of butter into your pan. You just wanna push the butter around and get it melted. Once the butter is melted, you wanna take the cauliflower rice and just pour it into the pan. And then you want to mix it in with the butter. And once it is all mixed in well, you want to just basically lay it all spread out across the bottom of your pan so that as much of the cauliflower is on the bottom and it's not piled on the center on top or anything. And just kind of pat it down and firm it up a little bit. And you actually want to leave it in here for a while because you want the cauliflower to brown. It usually takes about two or three minutes on this temperature to start browning, I find. So we're just going to leave this for a couple of minutes and then we'll mix it up and we're going to lay it flat over again. Okay, so now it's starting to get a little sizzling, but it's only browning a little bit. So we're just going to stir it up a little bit and then flatten it back out but i imagine it'll be browning up a fair bit in the next minute or so here we'll just leave it for another minute and we'll check back on it okay so now it is browning up a bit better sometimes it can take longer i do not think i preheated my pan enough 
but at least now we're starting to make progress. So we're gonna let it brown for probably another minute. It's been browning for, I'd say about five minutes now. And we'll just give it another couple minutes, I think, and then we will begin adding the next ingredients. Okay, so it is browning up a lot nicer now. I think we're getting close to the point now where we can finally add our next ingredient. So we're actually gonna add another tablespoon of butter to begin with. So just put that on top, just scrape the sides off. and mix that back in. It's just gonna make the bottom a little wetter to make sure nothing sticks like the eggs or anything. So what I like to do is actually scrape it all to one side when I crack the eggs to put them in. So I'm actually gonna use our chicken can as my trash can for doing this part and I just dropped an egg on the ground. Okay, so don't be like me and drop the eggs on the ground because that's counterproductive, especially with how expensive eggs are becoming. Okay, we got one. We're just gonna, yeah, and we didn't butter it enough on the bottom, so it's sticking a little bit. So make sure you have enough butter on the bottom of your pan or else you'll be scraping a little bit. And mix it, we just put one egg in so far. Just mix really well so it blends in and you're not stuck with big chunks of eggs or just egg yolks or just egg whites. And when it starts to get a little bit cooked, you can go ahead and add the next egg and just add it on top. And then just make sure you start mixing right away. So just make sure you mix this for a couple minutes really well to make sure all the egg gets cooked. Breaking up any big pieces you see. And we're just gonna leave that for a minute to get a little more brown and cook a little bit more. So now I think our eggs are just about cooked and it's a little more brown and we're ready to add the chicken. Now, unlike the cauliflower rice, I did microwave the cauliflower rice in the bag for about three minutes prior to this just to basically get it out of the frozen state, but it's not completely cooked ready to go. As for the chicken, I will not be re preheating the chicken at all. We're just going to add all of it right into here. And as I mix it, I will be breaking it up a little bit more. And you just wanna break little pieces up if you don't want it chunkier. I personally prefer the chicken to be finer in my rice, or my cauliflower. And you see that it mixes really nicely. And we're just going to let it sit for a minute or two before we start adding the sauces and the spices. So we're just gonna let it sit for a minute and start to get a little warm. And then we'll continue. So we are ready to add the sauces now. We're going to be adding some traditional soy sauce. On the ketogenic diet, I recommend not getting the low sodium sauce. This has one carb per one tablespoon. And then we're also gonna be putting toasted sesame oil in it as well, which has zero carbs. This is, it's got fat and calories, but no carbs and no protein. Now, usually I will eyeball the sauces just because I like a different amount every time. But I usually do around two tablespoons of each. Um, sometimes I'll add a little more, sometimes I will add a little less. I honestly, it's different every time I make it. So just mix the soy sauce in a little bit. And then we're gonna add the sesame oil. Now I find that the sesame oil is what gives it its fried rice smell. Personally, I love the smell of sesame oil. I just, I love it. It smells like traditional Chinese food to me. So now our rice is a little bit wetter. 
which if you're gonna be putting it in the refrigerator or the freezer you want it to be a little bit wetter because then it won't dry out when you reheat it as easily and so lastly we're gonna be sprinkling just a little bit of garlic uh, powder on I would say probably about a teaspoon you don't want much just enough to give it a little bit of a garlic taste and then you just want to sprinkle on a little bit of salt probably about a quarter teaspoon and then the same for the pepper just a little bit for a little flavor probably about a quarter teaspoon so now that that's all mixed you want to mix it all up nicely and that is pretty much it now if you are not on the ketogenic diet or you're not worried about peas or carrots or anything like that you can definitely add and take away anything you want you can make this with beef you can make this with shrimp you can make it with pork it's like i said before it's a very flexible recipe we just prefer chicken in our house but it fries up great it reheats wonderfully when i reheat this i can't even tell that it was reheated it's so good so i just want to turn the stove off and you are done making ketogenic chicken fried rice so that's my video on how to make keto chicken fried rice i hope you guys enjoyed it please let me know if there's any other recipes you would like or if there's something that's not ketogenic that you would see, like to see about getting a recipe for that is ketogenic please let me know and i can do the best i can please check out my website where you'll find all my recipes as well as more recipes and other things and if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe hit the bell below and let me know what you think and I'll see you guys in the next video.